Hi everyone, I'm Sharon Mayer. I'm the Integrative Functional Nutritionist at the Institute of Health and Healing. And we are gonna be talking about things that we can do to help ourselves through this wonderful time, which is the holidays, but sometimes it can be very, very stressful. So the first thing that we want to consider is about how do we eat through this period of time? You know, from Thanksgiving through to January is a long time to be eating excessively. So we want to think about how do we do this? So I always suggest that we have to bring some mindful mindfulness to everything we do really. But if we could do it to some eating, that would be really good. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is being aware and in the moment. And it's a really tricky thing. It needs some effort, it needs some concentration, and again, it needs some, uh, some awareness. So often our thoughts are somewhere other than where we are. We might be sitting in a chair, but we may be thinking about the future. Or we may have thought about, well, what happened yesterday? How does that affect me or the year before or maybe five years ago? So what we want to do is bring ourselves back into the moment, that very moment of sitting in the chair and where you are right now as you're listening to this recording or looking at where we're going to go with, with these slides. It's about how are we? So it's also about not thinking about what happened in the past or tomorrow or stressing over the to-dos because the to-dos are in the future, right? And it's just about what happens now. So mindfulness encourages us to notice preoccupations. You know, where are we again? And gently to bring ourselves back to this very present moment. Being mindful is particularly challenging through the holidays. And yet this could be a really good time and opportunity to learn it, practice it, and learn it again. It is a constant practice. You don't wake up in the morning and say, I'm gonna be doing mindfulness all day. No, the mind moves on, you got to gently bring it back, moves off in different directions, but it does take practice. So around eating, we can be very mindful. We can be doing, so before you eat, you can check in and you can say to yourself, am I rushed? Um, am I stressed? Am I sad? Am I bored? Am I hungry? It really is about emotional eating too. So a lot of times we'll stuff emotions down with food. And how can we be aware that we're doing this is by noticing that feeling. There's also a difference between what we need and what we want. And if you can differentiate between those two, it's magic. You know, we want to do a lot of things, but what does the body actually need? That's the big difference. Wanting is something that the mind says, oh, I need to have a chocolate bar. I need to have three slices of bread and maybe some honey or some jam on that. But the body doesn't need that. So there's that differentiation between uh, want and need. And then we look at holiday stress. Now, the next couple of things, slides we're going to look at, this is what they have decided affects Americans during the holiday time. Certainly we know now that COVID is a big issue for lots of people. Do we invite those that are vaccinated or do we invite those that are unvaccinated? That's always a huge question. If they're unvaccinated, do they wear masks? Um, and then there's the whole emotion around being vaccinated or unvaccinated. So that presents a huge stress for people. Politics is another one. And of course, the vaccination unvaxed thing also is a political issue. Do we wear masks? Cleaning your home. How much cleaning needs to be done before you have the parties or before you have groups of people coming to you? How well does your house need to be decorated? Am I hosting this year or is some other family hosting? Uh, whether the kids will be happy with their gifts is a high stress for parents. Is, am I or my partner having to work too much over the holidays? 
whether to put Christmas spending on, on a credit card. Uh, those are all, these are all the reasons that we get stressed. Whether we are cooking and shopping for food, what should we be cooking? What is the recipes that we should be doing? Family politics and dynamics plays a huge role in, in holiday stress. Where should we spend Christmas Day? Hearing constant Christmas music. You know, I've started to hear some of that already. It's very annoying. We haven't even had Thanksgiving yet. Old arguments resurrected. Someone drinking too much. The alcohol thing we're going to talk about in, in a while. Home repairs and upgrades. Should we quickly have this room redone before everyone comes to us for the holidays? Uh, social distancing. You know, when we're in crowds and lines, what are we doing around that? That's in, that can be very stressful. Other people being too jolly, but other people being too sad. A new recipe turning out badly. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you, if you are going to be having a group of people for dinner, don't be trying the recipe the day before or on the day. You want to be preparing that recipe a couple of weeks before and doing a trial run of it. Otherwise, that in itself can be very stressful because at least if you do it beforehand, you know what the outcome is. You know what it looks like. You know how to present it. Working out how to visit everybody, you know, it could be your family, it could be your husband or your partner's family or its parents or whatever that dynamic is, that can be quite stressful. Whether your partner is helping when you're hosting and whether to go out for Christmas dinner or stay at home. So these seem to be the major stresses for, for many people. It's interesting, right? So when we get stressed around that, we need to come back to that whole mindfulness. How am I feeling? What is achievable? And how can I handle it? Now we want to talk about the season. This is winter. It is a time for sleep, rest, and restoration. All of nature hibernates in the winter. And we sometimes forget this, but we are part of nature. And we need this time for quiet. We need this time for reflection. We need this time to just be taking care of ourselves too. It's some inner work that's necessary here. And the problem about the season is that it gets to be very jolly. And it goes against our nature, really, our deep DNA, because we are supposed to be hibernating. So find some alone time if you can. Even if it's 30 minutes would be a really good idea. And invitations, they come in droves. This would be a good time to say no to many of them. Choose the ones that you can actually do. But be selective about your invitations. Curl up with a book. Now, that sounds to me like absolute bliss. And I certainly am going to find some time in the holidays for that. Go for a walk in nature. And even if you have a lot of guests or people with you, take everyone for a walk in nature if you're finding it difficult to do on your own. But if you can find even 15 minutes for yourself in nature, it will be very, very restorative. It's about me time. Put yourselves first before anything else happens because you know that whole thing. Um, it's about taking care of yourself before you can take care of anyone else, right? It's also the time for colds, flu, and infection. And of course, there's an, the added stress, is it COVID or is it flu? And when we're interacting with many people in crowds and heated homes and stores, traveling, we are certainly putting ourselves at more risk to viral infection. So it's how do we protect ourselves from that, right? Uh, if our diet is poor or we're having too much sugar, that's going to uh, depress our immune system. And again, that opens us for more viral infections. If we become sleep deprived or lack of exercise, and again, it comes back to that stress. Too much stress is going to be problematic. Doing too much. This is the time for hibernation. It's so strange that we have to remind ourselves of this, right? But we do. And then alcohol. Too much of that is a problem. So when we're talking about alcohol, I want you to think about setting your drinking pace to S-L-O-W, slow. 
because again, this is very high in calories, it's very high in sugar, it depresses our immune system, it disrupts our sleep, we don't feel great with it, it can impact our digestive system. So watch how you drink. And this is where you could bring mindfulness to it. So never drink on an empty stomach. And then if you are, really pace yourself. Drink lots of water in between because you don't need to get dehydrated either. And be mindful about drinking. Drink for enjoyment, not because you're concerned that Uncle Jack is going to bring up topics at the table that are very uncomfortable, because that would be about stress. Think about drinking for relaxation, enjoyment, community. That's what you want to be doing. So sip, savor, and go slow. Skip the tasty, super sugary mixes that mask alcohol's taste. And, and instead of using those, those mixes, dilute it with something like soda water or salsa and some fresh lime juice that would probably be preferable. Alcohol really has a high sugar content. So we're always going to be concerned about that. And then there's the detoxification factor around that as well. How do we clear alcohol? And if you are um, needing to get home, for sure, use Uber. So alcohol is definitely something you want to consider. There are a couple of supplements that I suggest during this time. And here are 10. And you don't need all of them. But they may help you through the holidays. So digestive enzymes is going to help you digest those those heavy meals and that food, it doesn't sit in your gut. A probiotic would be very good because it reduces inflammation and it helps support your immune system and it can also help with digestion. Melatonin is amazing for helping with sleep. Always start off as slow with it, melatonin, like a milligram, and then build up to the level that really works for you. Too much and you may be feeling a little fuzzy the next day. This is a, a serenogen is a product by Metagenics and it's a really calming product. It's got a lot of herbs in them and it actually helps to reduce some of the anxiety. But if you can't get this product, then you can always use L-theanine. L-theanine is really good for anxiety. And L-theanine is an amino acid. We find it in a lot of the green teas too. Magnesium always good for relaxation and mood. It also helps with sleep too. B complex would be good for energy and definitely vitamin D3 for immune support. Vitamin C is immunity and so is zinc. NAC is very good for detoxification. And I would recommend NAC if you're drinking alcohol because it supports the liver and it helps with the clearance of alcohol. If you do NAC or NAC, it should be 500 milligrams twice a day, one in the morning and one at night. As I say, don't take all the supplements because there's a lot. The ones that I would suggest would be a digestive enzyme, probiotic. If you don't sleep well, then melatonin would be good. And then I would highly re recommend vitamin D3 and NAC as well. Those would be the highlights of that list. So remember this, the holidays are a time to eat, drink, and be merry. Focus on connection, not only on the food, but enjoy everyone's company. Play with the kids, help wash the dishes. The host and hostess will be delighted if you do. And lots of things and conversation and interesting aspects happen when you're washing dishes. Have fun, be happy, and be very grateful because this is certainly a better time than it was last year, right? And the holiday season, this holiday season, enjoy the food, enjoy the camaraderie, and enjoy your festive holidays. Take care, everyone, and happy holidays.